Welcome to Pathways of Hope. My name is Lucy Taka and I would like to share with you my reflections on the Gospel of today taken from Luke chapter 9 verses 46 to 50. In today's Gospel, we witness a disturbing scene, the apostles arguing as to who among them is the greatest. This becomes more unsettling because in the passage before that, Jesus had just predicted to them his coming passion that he was to be betrayed. The apostles did not seem to grasp his statement, and their arguing among themselves revealed the state of their hearts. They seemed to have not fully understood Jesus' mission and their role in it. It also seemed that up to that point, after being with Jesus for a considerable amount of time, they continued to still be concerned about their personal well-being and ambitions. Of course, Jesus knew their hearts. He right away responds in a manner the apostles could understand. He puts a stop to their childish ways by using a child to drive home his point. Children in those times were at the bottom of the social ladder. While most likely loved by their parents, society did not put much value on them most likely for their lack of economic contribution. Children often serve their families by performing menial and lowly tasks. However, Jesus valued children and related with them regularly. He told his followers that unless they become like little children, they would not enter the kingdom of God. This admonition came when the apostles were getting too full of themselves. What was Jesus communicating to them by doing this? It seems Jesus wanted to turn upside down the apostles' concept of greatness. That it really is not about being number one, being the most admired or the most popular or even the wealthiest. Greatness is about humility, having the humility of a child, living a life of service, without any sense of self-importance nor expectation of reward. Jesus exemplified humility. Philippians 2 verses 5 to 8 states, Have among yourselves the same attitude that is also yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, Coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. By his life and words, Jesus pointed out to his disciples that greatness was about conforming one's life to his life, a life of humility and servanthood. Now, let's not be too quick to judge the apostles in the gospel today. Instead, let us take a look at ourselves. I surmise that we are often like them, no matter how long we have been following the Lord. Let us ask ourselves these questions. When I do a service, do I expect something in return, even just an expression of gratitude? When people fail to thank me or do not thank me enough, do I feel irritated? Do I expect even relish the accolades and appreciation, the better treatment, generous gifts that are often given to those who serve? Am I willing to serve without them? Am I free from attachment to position, power, or influence in my community? Do I appreciate and value God's work in and through others without feeling envious? I believe Jesus used the example of children to his followers because they were pure-hearted, generous, and did not expect anything in return for the service they rendered to their families. Remember the boy with the five loaves and two fish? I am sure he gave them without expecting to be famous, thanked, or even written about. Let us be like him and give of ourselves generously and unreservedly without expecting anything in return. If we offer ourselves, our service, and our resources in humility, 
we give the Lord room to work powerfully and display His greatness in and through us. Let's do a heart check today. If you find through your answers to the questions earlier that you are like the apostles in today's gospel, ask the Lord for forgiveness. Ask Him for the grace to be transformed. Jesus calls us to greater humility and generosity of self with only the knowledge that we are becoming more and more like Him and the hope of being with Him for eternity as our rewards. Let me end with a prayer for generosity of St. Ignatius of Loyola, which I hope you can pray with me. Lord, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to labor and not to seek to rest, to give of myself and not ask for a reward, except the reward of knowing that I am doing your will. Amen. Thank you and God bless you.